Yeah, and I think that's an important thing that people have a hard time with is is sort of you you can say with great power comes great responsibility because those all every kid every person in that community has mm -hmm. the power to change the rules now not arbitrarily because they have to you know work within the democratic structure they have to actually get the community to agree to it right. but that is a power that is a power that that so so I talk about psychological powers in my work and and there are just four and the first two are Tame the monkey mind, and then train the elephant spirit. In the, in meaning that in psychology we found that they, you basically we have two different kinds of minds. And there's a there's a metaphor from Jonathan Haidt. He talked about you know the conscious mind, which is that monkey mind that can be chattery, thinks it's in charge, but it's not, <laughs> because mm -hmm. it rides on the elephant. The elephant is the non-conscious mind, and and if the elephant decides it's going this way, you know, and anybody who's ever tried to change a habit understands exactly what this metaphor is about is the elephant's going this way and the monkey might say oh we need to go that way and it's like the elephant's like we go this way mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and that's exactly what continues to happen now the monkey can also be clever and so can influence the elephant and train the elephant into doing things differently so so those are two powers calming the the, the monkey mind and and training the elephant uh are are, are powers but then the other two powers, which are deeply embedded in, in, in psychology, as, and these are non, even less intuitive, is the one is change the situation you're in. And the fourth is choose a different situation to be in. So these are what I call the situational powers. And they actually, psychology has shown, are far more powerful than anything to do with the monkey and the elephant. It is the situational powers are the places where you really make the biggest difference for people. And that's why I focus oftentimes on what are the ways that that all the, the alternatives that I've been interviewing uh, at or, you know, like, OK, how do you structure things around decisions and around uh, con resolving conflict? Because those are situational structures that mm -hmm. shape the situation. And the important thing is that we've just been talking about is every member of the community, even if they're four or five years old, has the ability to say, I think that's not quite right and let's change it. Now, they have to argue coherently, and they have to present it to the community, and they have to make a case, and, and then you know, get a vote on it. So there's, it's not just an arbitrary whim of any random child. It's the, that's, that's one source for the potential for it. Like, they could come up with something that's actually absolutely brilliant, and, you know, yes, we'll do that. Yeah. But it's in check by the community as a whole. And so, but, but that power is there. You say, oh, okay, I can change, by definition, the way that democratic schools more generally and a lot of uh, these alternatives work is, by definition, every member of the community has the power to introduce a change. Right. And, and, and then it becomes a conversation. And, and, and the power to call to account their peers and their fellow community members and say, wait, we agreed to this, not that. And... And as you've described, you know, sort of that, that, but they, even that is not just an arbitrary power. It's something that there's a mechanism for expressing that power. And then there's active conversation about, oh, was this really a broken rule or was this, you know, just somebody being upset with somebody else, you know? And, and, and they get, so they're actively in a conversation about what that means. So it's really yeah. interesting. And, and then also having, having the, support structures to make that voice heard right. so you might be a five-year-old who wants to change the rule but doesn't know how to make an argument doesn't know right. how to write down the thing that you want to change mm -hmm. but then having your you know for them it's still like oh that's my teacher but you know we don't we we're the staff we're there to go right oh you want to, well yeah let me help you write that do you want to tell me your ideas and when we get to that meeting like do you want to say it this is the agentic schools vodcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills what makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. 
What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.